Hello all, today we'll be discussing how we can apply deep learning in medical science. So here I'm going to take a data set which is from Kaggle, where I need to determine based on the chest x-rays, whether the person is having a disease called as pneumonia or not. So in order to download the, uh, the data set, I'll be providing you the link in the description box in the YouTube channel, in my YouTube video. So from there you can download this particular uh, data set and here when I go and see the data set, first of all, I have something called as X, chest underscore x-ray and inside the test and train, I have something called as normal and pneumonia categories. So pneumonia basically has all the images of the chest x-rays of the people who are suffering from pneumonia. And uh, this is how, first of all, what you have to do is that first you go ahead and please download this data set from here. Now, once you download it, I will just show you some of the images, how this particular data set looks like. So to begin with, I'm going to implement, uh, I'm going to implement a deep learning model by using an architecture, which is called as VGG16. VGG16 is basically uh, a transfer learning application altogether. So here you can go ahead and see this uh, in Keras, you basically have different kind of transfer learning techniques like VGG16, VGG19, ResNet, ResNet V2, Inception, MobileNet, DenseNet, NASNet. From all these things, I'm either using VGG16, you can also use VGG19 and try by using the same, same generic code template with respect to other deep learning techniques over here with respect to the transfer learning. So to begin with guys, I'm going to take this. And first of all, I'm just going to go through the data set and show it to you how the data set looks like. So here is my folder of the data set and you can see that I'm having the taste and test and train data set which is divided into two different categories that is normal and pneumonia. Now in order to show you some of the images, let's, let's see the images how it looks like. So to begin with, I'm just going to click on the first image and the first image basically looks like, like this. So this is a person who's actually suffering. This is the x-ray of the chest of the person who is actually suffering from pneumonia. Similarly, I have different kind of images which you can see it from here. And all the images can be downloaded from Kaggle itself. To begin with guys, I'm going to use a VGG16 model, which is uh, available in Keras. From the Keras, I'll be using these libraries like Lambda, Dense, Flatten. Uh, these are the libraries which is used to create the dense layers. Uh, apart from that, I'm going to import the VGG16 because I'm since I'm using transfer learning, I'll be downloading all the weights that are present in VGG16 and I'll be using those. So initially, I'll be download, uh, importing all these libraries. Uh, the code will be available in my GitHub uh, link prop, uh, repository, which will uh, where I'll be providing the link in my description of this particular video. So to begin with, I'll be importing all these libraries. So first of all, let me just execute this library. So uh, all the importing has happened properly. Now, then to begin with, what we have to do is that we have to, first of all, take the image size of 224,224. That is what the image size that I'm trying to take. And then I've given my training path, which is inside data sets and train. And similarly, the test path or the valid path, which is inside data set and test. Okay. This two part, I've actually given it. And the way of importing the VGG16 libraries from Keras, it is very simple. You just have to initialize this particular VGG16 library. You have to give the input shape as image size. The image size is nothing but 224, 224. And always remember that all the images will be in RGB channel when you're applying transfer learning. So I've taken image size plus three, three is basically my, for my RGB channel. And the weights that I'm basically using is of ImageNet. ImageNet are basically competitions where people come up with this kind of transfer learning techniques. So where they have a very good accuracy or it is basically called as the state of art algorithm. After importing this, let us just go ahead and import this. You can see that uh, it will get executed perfectly. Once it gets executed, what we have to do is that we have to, first of all, make our layers training as false because we don't want our layers to get trained again because we are using the weights from this image net. So all these weights are basically uh, used for classifying thousand different category of images. So we'll be using those same weights, only the output layer I'll be changing because based on my output layer, I just have two different categories that is normal and pneumonia. So what I'll do is that I'll just run this for loop and I'll just keep my trainable parameter as false. So here it is. I'm going to execute this. You can see that each and every layers now is becoming false. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find how many number of classes are there. And for that, I'm using this glob function. 
So this glob, what it will do, I've taken, I've given the parameter of my train data set, that is data set slash train. Inside my train, you can see two folders over here in the right hand side. And based on this particular two folders, what I'm doing is that I'm trying to find out the number of classes. So here it is, I'll execute this too. It is got executed. Now you can, if you go into the variable, uh, the folders, you can see that in the folders, I have two, two folders itself, one is normal and pneumonia. So this is perfectly done. After that, what I'm going to do is that since I, while initializing VG16, this include underscore top is set as false. That I'm just removing the last layer, which I don't require it. You know, because the last layer, I'm going to put the number of categories that I have, that is normal and pneumonia. So basically two categories. So what I'm going to do is that first of all, whatever the output of VGG I've got, I'm going to flatten it. So I've executed this flattening thing. Then after that, you can see that at the final layer, I'm adding the length of folders. Length of folders over here is nothing but, you can see that in folders, I basically have two different folders inside this. So the length is basically two. So this is basically my output layer, which I'm adding at the last layer of this particular transfer learning. So instead of thousand, I'm using just two. So here I'm using the activation function and I'm, and, uh, and I'm appending to this particular X layers itself. So here it is. So once I execute this, you will be able to see that my prediction layer is done. Finally, I will wrap it inside a model where my input will be my VGG dot input and my output will be the prediction one. So here it is. I execute this. Once my model is created, we can also see the summary of the model. Now see the summary of the model. The, the main interesting thing of this model is that this model also has uh, 16 layers of VGG basically, which is called as VGG 16. And then after that, you can see that the, num uh, the final layer, which is my tense layer is just having two parameters, two layers, two, two nodes, basically the two nodes is because of the two different categories that I have. So here is my model summary and this is just a concept of transfer learning where I've just used VG16. I have just changed the last layer and made it as two layers, uh, two different categories output. After that, I will just compile it by using categorical, categorical underscore cross entropy. And then I'm using the optimizer as Adam and the metrics as accuracy. So here it is. I'll just execute it. After this, the next thing is that I need, I, I should be able to, you know, retrieve my images from this particular folders, right? In my test folders so that I will be able to train my model before. Uh, and that can be done by using this particular library, which is called as image data generator in the image data generator. I'll also be doing some other kind of operation on the images, right? Rescaling, share range, zoom range and horizontal flip. So basically I'm changing uh, the images. I'm rescaling the images again. This will help us to create more additional images with respect to the same training data set. Whereas in the test data gen, I don't have to do anything. I just have to do the rescaling work. So here it is for the train and test. I'm doing it. Now, after that, I'll set the path image that is data set slash train. My target size is 224, 224 and my batch size is 32. And what, I've, what type of class mode I'm using? Basically, it's category tool because I just have two categories over here. So I'll be using this. I can also use binary since I have only two classes, but this will also. After executing this, you can see that what this statement will do is that it will retrieve all the data from the training data set that I have in normal and pneumonia folders. And it'll show us the total number of counts with respect to the number of classes that I have. So here you can see that after I executed this, I found five, two, one, six images, the total number of images from both the folder, which was belonging to two classes. Similarly, I'll do it for test set In test set. Let's see how many number of images are there. So you can see that for testing, I have 624 images that are belonging to two classes. Finally, I'll start running my epochs and over here, the number of epochs that I'm running is five and the steps per epoch. I've taken that number of uh, the training data set length, whereas the test set length I've taken as the validation steps. And uh, here it is. And I'm going to execute this. As soon as I execute this, uh, the epochs uh, running will uh, actually start. Uh, it will take around 15 minutes in my system, which is like a GPU over here. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just pause this particular video for some time so that the running happens. And after the running happens, I'll again continue the video and I'll show you what was the accuracy that I got from this particular epoch values as we are going ahead. Let us wait for some time and let us just see the first epoch value that how it is running. And based on that, I'll just pause the video for some time and I'll show you how this particular video, uh, the accuracy looks like. 
So my, uh, the overall, uh, I have run the program, my uh, five epochs has actually completed. Now you can see that this is my model summary. And you can see that for epoch one, I was about to get the training accuracy to 92% and my validation accuracy was till 81%. And then it got increased to 91% and 87% decreased a slight. But till my epoch five, I was able to get a very good validation accuracy of around 84 to 85% with, with, with some fluctuation activities over here. You can also see that the loss is actually reduced to a very lower value. But the training accuracy that I've got is around 90, 96% and the validation accuracy I've got somewhere around 83%. So this is how my whole, uh, you know, uh, the, I've got a better accuracy for that. Uh, now the next thing is that once my model is created, now you can see that I have named my model into something like model underscore VGG19.h5. Okay. So I have stored this model into the same location over here. Now what I'll do is that fine, my model has got trained properly. I've got a better accuracy. Now, let me just give a new image. Okay. I have a validation folder over here. Let me give a new image from here, which is from normal or pneumonia categories and try to see whether I'm able to get the correct output or not. So when I actually use the same model over here, I should be able to get my correct output. So that is where I'm going to see that how we are going to get this particular output or not. And for that, I've written another type of code, which will actually help you to do the predictions for that. So let me just first of all zoom in a little bit. I'm going to restart the whole kernel over here since I've executed the previous code over here. So the first thing what we have to do is that since my model is actually trained, I've actually created a H5 file, which is like model underscore VGG 19.h5. Now you can see that in my previous code, uh, it is something called as a uh, model dot save. Here what I can do is that I can, in this code, I will just replace this name over here. So when my training happens, I will keep the file name like this model vgg 19.h5. So as soon as the training happens, this file will get saved in this particular name, right? So again, uh, I'll be providing this particular whole code in, in my GitHub uh, and the link will be given in the description in the YouTube video, in this particular YouTube video. So let me just go ahead and, you know, pass a particular image from this particular validation data set and then from this validation data set, what it will do is that we'll go and hit our model and what will be the prediction that will be the given by our model, we will we'll check it out. Okay. So for first of all, I, what I'll do is that I'll just take this particular image that is a normal image. So this normal image is basically a person who is not having pneumonia. So I'm just going to give this particular image to my model and see what my model will be doing the prediction. So to begin with, what I have to do is guys, First of all, I'll import this uh, libraries from models as load, load model, image, process underscore import, numpy, and I'll load the model first of all that I have present in the same location. So you can see that over here, I have model vgg19.h5. This will get loaded and it'll take some time to load. Okay, it has loaded perfectly now. Now the next thing is that I'm going to load this particular image that is present inside my validation, normal, and this particular file, right? So I'll load this particular image and then I'll convert it into an array. Now you see this step-by-step step how we do it. Both this file will be put in the GitHub link so you can see it from there. So once I load this, if I go to the variable explorer, you can see that this is my new array of the image that I get in the RGB format, right? That what I'll do is that I'll convert that into an array and then I'll expand the dimension because uh, this particular predict statement will require four different dimensions. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll also do pre-process in underscore input. So here you can see that it is pre-processed now. Then after that, I will be doing something called as model dot predict and whatever the image data I have done after the pre-processing, so basically the image, this one which I have given that I've actually followed the steps. First of all, I've loaded the image, converted into an array, expand the dimension and pre-process that particular image. So let us go and see after that, what will give me the predictions. So here it is. My uh, code has got executed correctly. Now let us observe the class. And you can see that the class output model dot predict is giving us two values. That is either from zero, zero and one basically indicates that in my file explorer, if you see that I have two folders, right? In my training and test data set, one is normal and one is pneumonia. The zero basically indicates for normal. And one basically indicates for the uh, label value for the pneumonia. So for the zero, I'm getting the probability as one. That basically indicates that whatever image I had actually given from the normal, it is basically a normal image. 
and the person is not having that particular pneumonia disease for this particular chest ray, chest X-ray scan. Now, similarly, what I can do is that you can see for the one, it is a very negative or very smaller value like 0 0.000 10 to the power of minus 17 times zeros 0.2. So this uh, is a very lower value. So we can actually see that for this type of particular image, it is giving us a value like it is normal. Now let us go ahead and see it for pneumonia. So for pneumonia, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take one more image. And remember guys, this is the validation data set. So I don't have to worry and check it once again, because this is the data set I've retrieved it from the so here. Instead of normal, I'll change the path to pneumonia. So let me just copy this again. So here it is. I'll just save this over here. Okay. Now this, you can see that pneumonia is there. Now let me execute all these lines of code again. And let us go and see the output. So again, if you go to the variable explorer and see the classes, you can see now my second variable, which actually indicates the second label, which actually indicates uh, the pneumonia folder is basically having the value as one. So this basically indicates that whatever for image that I have given over here, that is person 946 bacteria, this basically has a pneumonia problem. So this is how you can actually implement this. Now the next thing that most of you are basically asking the question like, uh, how do we deploy this particular model? That uh, I'll do it in my next video. I'll come up with my next video where I'll be actually deploying this particular model in Azure or AWS and converting it to a web API which you can integrate with your front end application. So uh, that was it guys for this particular video. I hope you like this particular video. Make sure you subscribe this channel if you have not. And happy learning. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you one and all.